guys and welcome back. On this week's show, part three of our music stand build. Well, last week on the show, um, we finished off with marking our dovetails onto the legs of our music stand. So the first thing we're going to get started with uh, today is cutting those. So grab your dovetail saw and let's head over to the bench. The first step in our process is to use our dovetail saw, line it up with our line that we drew on this flat surface here of our, of our um, leg. You want to cut right on the outside and being very careful to follow your degree line that you drew on the end use your dovetail saw and cut down. Now, cut, slow down when you get close to the bottom and just take it easy so you don't want to cut too much material. And let's go ahead and cut those angles there. And there we have the angle cut. Um, it's a little bit of a difficult cut. I think this would be a lot easier for me if I were to lower this down, but unfortunately in the tail vise it's uh, a little awkward. I'm going to take the next one over to the front vise of the bench and work it that way. Uh, now we want to trim down these sides and what I'm going to do for starters is just use my dovetail saw to rough it out and then we're going to pair up to the line with um, with a curved gouge chisel. And now we're just going to cut the shoulders just up to the line but um, we're going to leave ourselves some room there to uh, get in there with a carving chisel and cut away the excess waste. And there's the one side. So we'll cut the other one the same way and then uh, I'll show you what to do with the chisel. Well I now have a curved carving chisel and uh, I've honed it and given it a nice sharp edge and all we're going to do at this point is I'm going to get in here with this chisel and I'm just going to very gently and very slowly pair all the way along with this chisel until I can meet the line and match the profile of our pedestal on this shoulder of our dovetail. Take your time, there's no rush to fly through this. Um, you know, you guys know that I'm not that great at hand cut dovetails and now I'm doing curved shoulders. So brave guy am I, but uh, either way, we're gonna go ahead and pair this and get this the way it should be. And uh, there's no rush, just take your time working along here. Um, I may end up getting it down most of the way and then maybe sanding up to the line. I, I really don't know. It's kind of a learning process for me on this one too. But anyway, carrying on with uh, curving the shoulders of these dovetails. So there you go, there is the dovetail with a curved shoulder. Um, I did get a little bit of chip out there and I'm hoping that that's going to uh, be hidden under our lip, but if not, um, well, maybe it'll give it some character, I don't know. Um, so finish all three of those legs and then we can move on with marking uh, to cut out the pedestal for our music stand. You've got all those dovetails cut and now what you need to do is cut out your base piece here to accept those uh, tails. And 
you need to place a mark. I've got one right here, and then one right here, and another one right here. 120 degrees apart, um, and that will represent the center of each dovetail. Now, there's an easy way to do this if your lathe has positive stops. My particular lathe has positive stops, 24 of them exactly. So all I did was chuck this back up between the centers and mark it at number 24. And then I spun it and locked it in at number 16 and then locked it in at number 8. Um, with 24 positive stops, three legs, 24 divided by 3 is 8. So you put a mark at, you know, each 8, and you end up with 120 degrees apart. Well, now that you have those marks on there, it's time to lay out your dovetails. And this is no different than any other process of cutting hand-cut dovetails, uh, in that we're going to line up our leg, on top, centered with our 120 degree mark, and trace it. It's as simple as that. Just trace it onto your, uh, to your pedestal. Now, because each leg is individually carved, um, they may not all be exact fits. So you want to mark these individually and number them. So. We're just going to line this up with the center of this one here and with the edge of our pedestal and we're just going to mark our dovetail just like that. And there is the mark of what it is that we have to cut and we will mark this I guess with number one. Go figure, eh? First one we did is number one and we'll put a number one in here as well. So we're mark all three, and then we're going to move on to cutting those. Once you get those marked, just place a square on the base of your pedestal here and transfer these marks from the inside edge of your dovetail over onto the edge of your pedestal, just so you have some guide cut lines to uh, to run your saw on because of the way that these are cut um, or marked you're not going to be able to use your saw for the entire length of it you're only going to be able to cut up to a certain point and then you're going to have to stop so we'll transfer these marks and then we're going to get into cutting them which is a lot of chisel work So what I've done is I've clamped this in the vise and used my dovetail saw to saw down as far as I could along those lines until I reached the bottom line of our dovetail and it doesn't reach all the way up. You can't help that. You'll damage your top turning here. Um, so the rest of this now is chiseling out. So I'm going to clamp this in the vise and chisel out this one dovetail and do some, some test fittings and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, so when all was said and done um, with those dovetails, with those curved shoulders, um, the whole bit with the uh, gouge chisel, it, it worked. It really did. But I had to go back in afterwards and fine tune everything with a quarter inch uh, chisel and just sort of working in towards the, the base of the dovetail to get the curve um, and to make sure everything fit properly. So you're going to want to play with that and take your time. Um, but now that we have those pieces set up, uh, we're going to move forward now uh, with the next step. 
Well, the next step that we're going to take involves the legs still. All the fine tuning is done and everything fits nice along the edge of the pedestal, but we're looking for more of a, a, a classy piece of furniture. And this right now is very, very uh, clunky, very, very bulky. And uh, it's, it's not that classy, you know? So what we want to do is uh, I'm going to take a taper down each one of these legs on each side. They start off at one, of, one and one eighth of an inch thick at the base, but I want to taper them slightly down so that at the end here, we're going to end up with seven eighths of an inch. So what we're going to need to do is put a line here or a mark one eighth of an inch in from each of the edges. And uh, I'm, I think I'm going to use the, um, the belt sander for this and I'm just going to carefully taper this down. Now you could use a hand plane, you could use files, like whatever it is that you need to use. I have the large belt sander so for me that works. But a nice taper so that we're going to take it down uh, leaving your full one and one eighth at this end but tapering it down to seven eighths of an inch at the tip of each leg. The taper is done on all three legs. Let me just show you the difference here between the untapered leg and the taper. It's not a huge difference, but it just gives it that not so bulky look. And just to point out something to you guys, if you don't have these marks on your face from a dust mask after sanding these, then you're doing it wrong. Uh, keep the stuff out of your lungs. So what we're going to do with this now is we need to shape these legs and round off the edges, give it a bit of character. Now there's a million ways you can do it. You can use a rasp file to take down the bulk of the material and then sand it, or uh, you know you could you could just sand it, or you could use a power sander. Um, I think I am going to use a combination of an oscillating spindle sander as well as um, probably the belt sander. And we're going to round down all of these edges, give it some nice character, give it shape. Uh, not so bulky and blocky. Um, so I'm going to shape one of these and show you what I come up with. And um, you come up with your own method here on how you want to and how you want them to look. If you like this square kind of look, then by all means do it. But for me, everything's going to be rounded and shaped. Well, you can see here that we have the rough shaping done and uh, we use the belt sander for that. We're going to head over to the oscillating spindle sander now and finish those off, smoothing out all of those rough edges. And then there's no other way to finish this um, other than some hand sanding. Okay, well you can see here that all three of our legs are shaped now and you have an option at this point. Um, if you want your stand to be able to be broken down for storage, um, then you don't need to glue in the legs. You can just have your dovetails hold it together, just friction fit. And when you break it down, of course, you pull it apart, etc, etc, and store it. Um, but for me, I want it to be a permanent installation and a permanent piece. And uh, for that, we're going to go ahead and glue in the legs. Uh, I don't think we need a video of how to do that. Um, so, glue in your legs. Just be sure to clean up all of your squeeze out that might come out of your uh, dovetail joint. And there it is. Our legs are glued into place onto our pedestal. And uh, you can see it's just a little wet there still where I was cleaning up squeeze out. But I'm, I think it looks great. 
I mean, uh, it's not perfect by any means, but it sure is close to it. Um, just so you know, in case you guys have one of the problems I did, uh, one of the joints was very, very loose in here. I don't know what happened, um, but it didn't fit quite right. So all I did to um, correct that problem was cut some very, very thin strips of oak as um, a very thin shim and that's all that I needed to be able to put it down into the dovetail joint, slide the leg in place and it held everything perfectly. Um, it, it takes that much of a difference to make the loose joint and that's a, that's a pretty thin piece of wood. So <clears throat> now that we have the legs glued on to this section, um, our next step is we need to glue our pedestal or the the top half of our pedestal onto our assembly and of course again if you guys want to have yours so that it breaks down don't glue it together but I don't want mine breaking down so I will be gluing mine in. Alright so that upper section of pedestal is glued into place and now we want to take that whole assembly and put it aside and let it dry. Um, you know what let me step aside here just like that and let me show you a picture of what we're looking at right now. Like, check that out, eh? It's looking really good. We're coming along, and hopefully yours is coming along just as well. So, our next step is that we need to get that center shaft, or the center piece, um, that will adjust the height of our music stand. And for that, we're going to head over to the table saw, and we're going to cut a piece of oak, that's going to be three, or sorry, three quarters of an inch by three quarters of an inch um, by 19 inches long. Now, you want to measure the depth of that three quarter by three quarter hole. Your tenon might be a little longer, but you want that um, three quarter by three quarter piece of stock to stick up just over three inches above the top of the top pedestal. So, for me, that's 19 inches long. So, 3 quarters by 3 quarters by 19. And there it is, 3 quarter by 3 quarter by 19. Um, you want to test fit it into your 3 quarter by 3 quarter hole in your pedestal. It's going to be a little on the snug side. So, to avoid some of the friction, we're going to take a 1 8 round over and we're going to knock off all of these sharp edges on each of these long corners. As well, we're going to give us a really good sanding just to take down its dimension ever so slightly just to allow it to slide in and out of that hole without any kind of friction, binding, or uh, obstruction. So once you get it so that it will slide in there quite freely, don't forget you're going to be adding a finish, so you don't want it to be tight. You want it to be a nice, loose, easy sliding fit once you get it to that point, then we will carry on by working on the top part of it um, where it's going to mate with the actual rack that holds your music. Well, the next step on this, um, this adjustable stem here is you want to choose what you want as the top. And we're going to round this over. There's going to be a pivot point here um, that our music stand um, is going to be able to um, rotate on so that you can pivot it for an angle. So what we need to do is mark a crosshairs here three-eighths of an inch down from the top and three-eighths of an inch in on either side which will give us the center of this particular piece and we're going to use a circle template find our three-quarter inch circle on this template and draw our round over at the top. Once we get that round over drawn, um, we're going to move forward and drill uh, a hole for our pivot point and that hole will be one-eighth of an inch in diameter. We're rounded over with a one-eighth of an inch hole drilled through this and this is going to be the pivot point for our, um, I'm not even sure what you call it, I guess the rack that holds the music.
But now what we need to do is to make the pivot or the hinge block that will go into this particular piece. So let's see if we can head over to the bench and uh, I'll see if I can confuse you a little more. Well, here's what I've drawn out for the pivot or the hinge block of this particular piece. It's four inches long and I've made it two and a half inches wide. And a half an inch in, I've drawn this line and this is where our pivot pin is going to be right here. And then a half an inch in up from the bottom, I've used a compass to draw this arch. And this arch will be used for um, drilling the holes for our retaining pin to go in. And I know this sounds a little confusing and there's really no way to explain how to do this other than it's four inches long. I used French curves to get a shape that I thought would look all right. And two inches up and a half an inch in from the edge is our pivot point. And then a half an inch up from the bottom is the area for the arc to drill our holes. Hopefully once I get this cut out, it'll make a little more sense. So why don't I cut this out and I'll show you exactly what it is that uh, I've got in mind here. Well, here we have the piece cut and I hope it seems a little more clear to you now. That pivot point has the 1 8 hole drilled in it and a 1 8 brass rod will go through that and the hole that you drilled in here. And there will be one on either side of this um, upright and you will be able to pivot this to pivot your music stand with um, locking holes all the way along that arch that we did. For now, we're not going to drill those uh, holes in our final piece. We're going to get to that shortly. But what we need to do at this point is get some half inch material and cut out two of these particular pieces and they need to be identical. Well, as I said, these pieces need to be identical. So the first thing that we're going to do is we have our blanks here, um, half inch thick oak. We're going to join them together using some double sided uh, tape lining up the the one bottom edge. And there we go, those two pieces are now taped together. We're now going to take our template and mark for our hole. And we're going to drill our hole first before we trace anything else out. So we've drilled that pivot hole and we're going to line up our template, put our 1 8 brass rod down through. Now we know that it lines up with our template and now we're going to trace our profile. Once we get this profile traced, we're going to take it over to the drill press and with our template still in place, we're going to drill our pivot holes that we marked up here. There's three of them. So I'm just going to take this over to the drill press and drill those three pivot holes. And we can go ahead and remove this brass rod now and our template. And we can see that we've got that marked out. We're just going to take it over to the scroll saw now with these two pieces taped together and using a number seven reverse tooth bit we're going to carefully cut these pieces out and we should end up with two identical pieces now for our um, hinge of our music stand. And there we have our two identical pieces for our hinge. 
Sometimes it's a bear to get them separated with that double-sided tape, but there we are. So two identical pieces, and at this point, I'll show you how they're going to be attached or how they're going to work with our um, upright piece of our music stand. Well, here we have our two pieces at the top of our stand, and um, you can see that these here will pivot just like that to give our music stand, I know they're not lined up, but it'll give our music stand the tilt that it needs to put it at the different angles. So at this point, you want to take this whole assembly over to the drill press, line up these edges here with a straight edge on its side like this, choose one of the holes and drill down through to mark it. Then you can remove your uh, brass rod and drill all the way through and that will be your point um, where your pin goes through. Now I'm going to drill it just a little bit bigger than 1 8 uh, just to give myself some room and what we also want to do is on our upright here that hole for the for the pin, the locking pin, is going to be um, countersunk on both sides so that if you're a little off and your brass rod is going through it will, um, the countersink will help guide it into that hole. So let's, uh, let's get that drilled and then that's pretty much it for this step. So the hole is drilled and countersunk through our main um, upright and what I'm going to do is I want to put a little countersink on the outside of each one of these um, retaining holes and then I'm going to put a slight round over on each edge of these pieces, not on the flat side though, and um, give them a good sanding. Then we're going to get these put into place on our uh, music stand. Alright, so we have this temporary setup here. Um, with our pivoting, um, I wish I knew what to call this, our pivoting hinge block, we'll call it. And with our retaining pin here, uh, I've got a dowel in here just to hold everything in place. And I've tested it to make sure that all the holes fit correctly. The next thing we need to do at this point is to take our base um, that we set aside earlier to dry. And you want to put this whole assembly into your base and wherever this flat edge is this is where the music is going to be so you want to decide the orientation here of what you want to look at when you're looking at the music and I think I'd like this to be the front face so I placed a little mark right there what we're going to do is set up a v-block on the drill press to hold this round top pedestal in place and I'm going to drill a hole in through, right through the center of this collar and only part way into the back. I don't want it coming right out the back side. But what I'm going to do then is once I drill right through this upright and part way into the back of the collar, then I'm going to raise the drill bit, keeping everything still in place. I'm going to raise this up three inches. Then drill another hole. So I've set up a V-block to help hold this top collar and made sure that I've set the depth stop to not allow the drill bit to pass all the way through the collar, only about half of the distance in. I'm also using the front vise on my bench to help hold it by clamping a leg in place and I've made sure that this edge here is square to the drill press table. So now the first hole that you want to drill is you want to set your raising center bar uh, as far down as you can and then I lifted it up just about maybe an eighth of an inch and now we're going to go ahead and drill right through um, both pieces until we hit the depth stop.
And with that done, like I said in the last segment, we're going to move this bar up three inches and drill another hole and then move it up three inches and three inches and keep going until all of our adjustment holes are completed. All of the holes in this upright now, you want to put a countersink in them on both sides to make it so that your retaining pin, uh, kind of same deal as with the retaining pin on the, the hinge block, that it kind of has a funnel to go into to help put, uh, put it in place. And that would be the height adjustment on our music stand finished. And there's more to do with these rods. They're not going to stay like this. But you would just remove the rod, adjust it to the height that you wish to have it. And because of the countersinks, it's relatively easy to feed it in. And then you've got your height adjusted. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's simple, but yet it works. So um, that is our height adjustment our tilt adjustment, and um, I guess the next thing we need to do will be to work on the actual stand that holds the music or the, the rack and of course do something about these uh, retaining um, pins. And with that we're out of time for another week. Um, again, quite a bit of progress today with the dovetails being cut of course and uh, you know, the center bar, the adjustment holes being drilled, the pivoting uh, hinge block. The, we've, we've come a long way from where we started, but I have to say this project is surprisingly time consuming. When I first thought that this would be a good idea to, to make for a, uh, a show idea, I sure as heck never imagined that it was going to be a three, let alone a four part video series. But um, it took me by surprise, the hand cut dovetails, the shaping of the legs, the lathe work, the laminations. It's all taken an extensive amount of time. And for those of you who don't realize how a half hour show translates into um, how much work, it's, it's about a full eight to nine hour day of filming to get one 25 to 30 minute show. Um, so... It's, it's been a surprisingly long time for this project, but you know what, I'm enjoying it. And hopefully you guys are enjoying it too. And hopefully you're gonna join me again next week for part four and yet another woodworking video.